Thank you very much. Have a good day. Entertainment retailing today is as competitive as ever. New configurations and products are making the in-store presentation even more critical. What are savvy retailers doing to make the most of their merchandising efforts? We'll find out. The EnviroCell Consumer Behavior Study. This large-scale inquiry into the minds and attitudes of our own customers was conducted by the EnviroCell Research Firm for the NARM Recording Industry Association of America Merchandising Committee. This study has given us an inside look into the retail buying process. In our second segment, you'll find out what hidden cameras and exit interviews revealed about shoppers' behavior. And we'll learn how to turn the EnviroCell study recommendations into profit-making designs, all on In Store Today. Welcome to In Store Today, the NARM merchandising video magazine. Hi, I'm Kelly Perrine. My co-host, Stephanie O'Neill, and I are here to give you the inside scoop on recorded entertainment merchandising. Merchandising is advertising at the point of sale. In our first story, field reporter Nick Erickson will tell us how successful merchandisers have turned their stores into retail showcases. Thanks, Kelly. Attitudes and lifestyles pioneered by the entertainment industry's artists are key elements in selling all types of consumer products. Music, television, and movie personalities are now a part of everyone's lives. And with this in mind, we went into the field to find out how retailers are capitalizing on the selling power of popular culture by turning their stores into theaters for selling. The theater for selling starts with the stage, the retail space. The breadth of home entertainment products and retailer services are making many stores an entertainment destination for consumers. In this store, each area is clearly laid out for consumer access. Display and product areas reinforce each other. All configurations are available and cross-merchandising between audio and video products is easily seen. The cashier area fits in with the store's overall traffic flow, providing convenience and room for display space. Traffic flow and sight lines are a big part of this store's stage setting. Consumers are invited in with attractive displays and lighting. The outer one-third area of the store features displays and product information drawing the consumer into the store. Once inside, consumers have clear sight lines to the rest of the interior. Signs and lighting direct the consumer to the products easily identified by category, configuration, and artist. In this store, special interest areas such as singles, children's, or soundtracks are designated by special fixturing and signage. By positioning these areas towards the rear of the interior, consumers can be drawn deeper into the store. Nothing says showbiz like lighting, and here the spot, display, and accent lighting really tell the consumer that the show is on. In this store, spotlights focus on displays and product areas, the stars of the show. Accent lights, chasers, and border lights define displays and interior design features. Backlit posters can enliven flat art. The general interior lighting covers the rest of the retail space for maximum traffic flow and product visibility. Theatrical style lighting focuses the consumer's attention on the products and sets the stage for that buying decision. Good product access is part of the act. Here, CD and cassette browser bins, shelving, step downs, and waterfalls offer exposure and entice the consumer to get their hands on the product. The entire focus of the product presentation is to maximize eye appeal and consumer interest. Effective merchandising gets the product into the consumer's hands, which is 50% of the sale. Retailers work very hard at creating a unique identity for their store. Whether it's a single outlet or a multi-store chain, store identity is a crucial factor in coordinating all of the advertising and merchandising efforts to create a single impression for the consumer. I spoke with Terry Woodward, president of Waxworks Disc Jockey, and asked him, what elements make up your store's identity? 
We feel that in today's retail environment that a music retail store should make an exciting visual and high-tech presentation. Our stores utilize as clear and concise signage as well as attractive neon lighting. We also utilize TV monitors, listening posts, electronic information system, and other interactive technologies. Since we sell entertainment, we feel that we should create an atmosphere that emphasizes that fact. The retailer's identity starts with the exterior signage and store entrance. Consistent graphic repetition of store logos used in print advertising reinforce the sales message. Once inside, the interior signage, posters, personnel identification, flyers, and anything else that carries the store's name clearly reminds consumers of the store's identity. Signage is essential to direct consumers to the categories and products in which they are interested. Store atmosphere is an unspoken but important part of encouraging consumer browsing. Retailers who plan their stores with an inviting interior and remain consistent in all aspects of merchandising and fixturing typically get the best results. Colors and materials have an influence on consumer attitudes. Neatness counts here too as clutter can confuse the consumer. In-store play establishes a musical atmosphere and can direct a consumer's interest to an impulse sale. Whether it's a store-wide system or a personal listening station, in-store play lets consumers sample the product before buying. Video is also a big part of the in-store play picture. Effectively used, video monitors can be a dynamic, moving segment of the merchandising mix. In-store displays are a key element in showcasing the stars and their products. Whether wall displays, windows, end caps, or freestanding, Merchandising displays are advertising at the point of sale. The best of these displays direct the consumer to the product. Hi, this is uh, James Miller. He's the general manager of the Tempo Crenshaw and Tempo USC stores. Uh, James, uh, we're curious about how you decided to choose the displays in your store as it relates to the sales of your items. Whatever merchandise that we are trying to push at that particular time, we generally take an end cap and we place that merchandise within that space so it will tie in with the boards. Uh, at various times we do the hangings uh, to tie in with the sales merchandise and try to lead the customer to that particular space. Windows or mall store entry displays are the first chance to grab the consumer's attention. Windows and entry displays are big, clear, and readable from a distance. They bring star power to the store's marquee. Notice here how effective use of interior lighting has reduced reflections and increased readability. These wall displays take maximum advantage of the display graphics provided by the labels and are accented with a dedicated display space and display lighting. One step beyond are these exciting store-made displays featuring graphics from the product and related images. A big sell feature in most stores are end caps. These prized merchandising areas combine the high visibility of display graphics with the product stocked in depth and in all configurations. End caps are used to focus on sale themes including artist and label specials, sale items, and new releases. Freestanding displays are a chance for merchandisers to work in three dimensions. Walk-around displays can include product from every angle. Shelf talkers and divider cards are pinpoint display opportunities to direct the consumer to the product. Counter displays are one last chance for an impulse sale with consumers as they are checking out. Accessories and smaller items do well here. Make sure to avoid a cluttered look. Cross-merchandising is an opportunity to capitalize on the image and consumer awareness of performing artists in other product areas. In this store, stuffed animals are cross-merchandised with videos to reinforce both products. Recordings make great premiums that other retailers may want to use with their own promotions. Creative use of cross-merchandising can make for bigger sales in both categories. All of the elements of successful merchandising come together in a campaign which combines advertising, promotion, and merchandising into a single unified sales effort. I spoke to Vartan, Vice President of Creative Packaging, MCA Records. Well, the campaign begins 
Uh, after the initial discussions of the look that we're trying to go after with an artist like Gladys Knight, once we acquire the look and, the, and the company is pleased and is pleased with the packaging, we then, at that time that we have the album cover decided upon, we go and we select the images that we will be using for the singles, we'll be using for the teaser campaign, and we may be using for peripheral stuff. Mm -hmm. So that at the onset, we have our images selected. And then it's, it's a matter of time when those images will be released. Simultaneous publicity is done and uh, any, any kind of uh, magazine articles. Those photographs are all chosen in, with Gladys, with the management, with the different members of, the, of our company. Merchandising is the important final step in a unified sales, advertising, and promotional effort. Store advertising features the theme with artist logo graphics tied to the store's identity. Exterior signage and window displays attract the consumer. Once inside, in-store play and POP direct the consumer to the product. On multi-artist programs, sampler CDs and custom in-store videos pre-program the store's in-store play system to reinforce the sales message. By combining all of these elements into a unified sales effort, retailers can cut through the clutter of sales messages consumers face every day. Additional merchandising opportunities abound in tour support, artist appearances, radio station promotions, and cross promotions. In addition, successful retailers make the most of everyday merchandising which encourages consumer browsing and add-on sales to a shopper's visit. Ideas include top sellers and new releases. Other theme ideas include employees' personal favorites, critics' choice, or a local radio station's top hits. There you have it, Kelly. A coordinated merchandising effort makes for an exciting store and add-on sales. Thanks, Nick. In our next segment, In Store Today will show what hidden cameras revealed about shopper behavior in profiting from the EnviroCell study. This document is the EnviroCell Consumer Behavior Study, a detailed report on actual consumer buying patterns in retail stores as captured by hidden cameras and with follow-up interviews. EnviroCell was chosen by the NARM, RIAA Merchandising Committee to research the impact that the changes in configurations and products have had on the consumer. Three target locations were chosen, and researcher observations reinforced by hidden cameras have given us a fresh picture of how consumers are selecting and buying recorded entertainment products. I set out to find how experienced and knowledgeable retailers are using these findings to increase their sales and profits. I'm here at the Hollywood Virgin Megastore, and one of the first things I've found is that sight lines and placements are as important as the artwork itself in creating effective POP displays. Consumers are coming into stores hungry for information. Interiors, which create space for displays and keep the sight lines clear, are making big points with consumers. It all starts with the windows. Window displays need to be big, simple, and eye-catching. Whether consumers are walking or driving past a retail outlet, they need billboard-sized graphics to catch their attention. Sightlines are critical here, as intervening traffic can obscure the lower portion of window displays. This graphic overlay shows how keeping the headline in the top one-third of the window display area helps consumers get the message, even if the view is partially blocked by pedestrians. Lighting is another factor in window visibility. Daytime lighting, combined with awnings, lets consumers see through the glass to the display. Other stores have featured artistic blow-ups of cover art as a fixture in their exterior image. Inside the store, sight lines and traffic flow combine to create the most effective POP areas. I'm here with Richard Irvin, retail designer for Virgin Megastores. Richard, what do you consider important when you're laying out a store? Well, I think the most important thing is to show the customer the depth of stock that the store actually is going to hold. Um, and to do this, what we try and do is just look at the arch space architecturally and make sure that we carry the maximum amount of product for that square footage. And that usually involves um, sculpting the space to a certain extent to create some sort of departmental areas. So what we try and do then is, is make use of the walls as much as possible to draw people through the store and present this, this large range of product on the floor of the store itself. And this, I suppose you could call that sight lines. Um, and what we try and do is involve the customer 
from the moment they walk in the door with, with the product. So we'd have new releases and uh, new product at the front door and then gradually move them through to the sort of catalogue. Store interiors offer a range of display opportunities. In this store floor plan, the window and entrance areas of the store have a higher percentage of their floor area devoted to displays. As the consumer moves deeper into the store, the product merchandising areas increase with bins, shelves, waterfalls, and step-downs. Specialty areas at the rear and around the perimeter of the store feature a wide range of entertainment products. Some stores, like this one, use completely separate walled-in departments to provide an isolated atmosphere for classical and jazz consumers. POP posters and displays are focused on one of two theme areas, image and information. Image displays are designed for maximum visual impact and quick readability. Big logo graphics, artist photographs, and striking designs combine to create an individual identity for the artist or album. The product should be placed in or near the display to reinforce the sales message. Image displays can be read at a distance and need clear sight lines for the consumer. Flexibility in design and in poster elements can help get the artist's name into the consumer's eye when the main image falls outside the principal sight line, as in this versatile poster for Tammy Wynette. As the Envirocell study showed, consumers have a narrow beam of focus and the most effective displays fall into that beam. This graphic overlay shows how narrow the range of a consumer's vision is when compared to store fixturing. Here's an example of bin displays. Note how the sight lines are focused for close distances and that consumers have little view of the rest of the store when browsing bin displays. Cascaded or waterfall displays have a larger surface area which shows more of the face of the product. In addition, products in cascaded displays can be seen more easily from a distance. Crowding the viewing distance with obstacles in the store minimizes the effectiveness of cascaded displays. Mobiles and hanging displays create competing interests. On the one hand, a mobile can easily be placed in the consumer's line of vision. On the other, mobiles obscure sight lines to other parts of the store and can create a cluttered image. The use of mobiles should be checked with the store's security policy as the movement of mobiles can trigger some alarm systems. Information-oriented POP gives the consumer more detailed information about the artist and product. These displays are text-heavy and require good sightlines and good lighting to keep the consumer's attention. Information-oriented display material is especially effective at or over the browser bins. The study revealed that shoppers are looking for more information on artist concert dates, top hit lists, and charts. Reviews, bios, or CD insert booklets can all be displayed over the product. Bin cards can provide additional information to consumers. Both label and store-produced bin or divider cards give more than just an artist's name. They can be used to tie into larger promotional programs. The Sony H-Clip fits onto header cards to hold label-supplied information. These cards can also be handed out at concerts and stacked at counters. Bin cards with an insert slot for additional material are another alternative. Despite all the publicity, the study has shown that music shoppers are more interested in information than image. They have more questions than shoppers of most other product categories. In addition to display information, retailers are making it easier for consumers to find the information that they want. Signage directs the consumer to this reference information system with details on consumer use. Computer cross-indexing is used here to include artists, genre, title, or configuration. Here's an example of a discography to fill in consumers on the artist's body of work. Product categories and configurations are all subjects for signage. Clear signage has been shown to be effective in directing consumers to their interests. In this store, the signs are clear, consistent, and easily seen. Reading is not as intuitive as just looking, so every effort has been made to create clear signage. The store layout is also critical, as consumers need clearly defined paths to their destinations within the store. Reading package information can be enhanced with a magnifier device mounted over the bins, as in this tower location. Clear signage and departmentalization is even more critical as stores are more and more becoming home entertainment centers. The range of choices in this store is an example of the spread of entertainment products.
In addition to CDs, cassettes, and even sheet music, there is video, books, magazines, video games, CD-ROM and multimedia products, a children's department, international music, music hardware, and music accessories and film. Truly a one-stop entertainment center. The Envirocell study found that one area of great untapped sales potential is the foreign resident and tourist market. Compared to their own markets, music is an attractive purchase, provided they know that they are welcome, that they can find what they want, and that they can get personal help in their own language. Retailers have found that a small investment in customer service can yield good rewards. At Tower, foreign language signage reminds tourists that deep catalog products are bargains and ask, why pay more? There's no better way to capitalize on the consumer's complete attention than at a listening station. These CD-based players are a modernization of an old idea where consumers can listen to the music before they buy. Information-hungry shoppers also require visual stimulation as they listen to music. Here's how retailers are using label-supplied materials and their own imaginations to maximize the marketing opportunities that listening stations provide. These brainstorming ideas from Uni Distribution would create listening stations that are flexible in their design and allow space for placing additional information for shoppers. Many labels have added several lines of copy on the artist to the back of their CDs for listeners. These frames from California record distributors were tested to create a showcase for additional information at listening stations. These simple, colorful one-sheets from Sony are posted by sales reps at listening stations. Information can include suggested tracks, reviews, event calendars, chart positions, and bios. Customers are attracted to the bright colors. Even more informative are newsletters, which may be placed at listening stations, such as this four-pager created by Rack Jobber Hamelman Company for Kmart. Bonuses include discount coupons and even a short customer survey. The response has been terrific. Tower has had many successful results with listening stations and has even used consumer interest to test market new or slower selling products. Combining color copies of the CD booklets into a scrapbook and including reviews and other newsy info on the artist minimizes clutter and has won raves from consumers. Consumer feedback is a big plus with questionnaires or suggestion forms. Discount coupons, special deals on multiple purchases from the listening station, contests, giveaways, and cross-referencing are all potential parts of listening station information packs. In every case, at-hand access closes the sale by putting the product into the consumer's hand. And whether the listening station features samples of many artists or is dedicated to single products, the quality and flexibility of digital technology makes listening stations a high-tech winner. In-store video play is a valuable sales tool. The EnviroCell study found that the full potential of video can be maximized by mixing entertainment and practical information. Retailers who intersperse video clips and movie trailers with their own sales materials get the most out of video. But there's more to it than just putting on a clip show. Monitor configuration and placement play a big part in maximizing video's sales effectiveness. Note how these monitors have clear sight lines for the consumer. A stack of monitors can be viewed at various distances. Monitor displays in the front of the store can actually project beyond the lease line in some locations to attract passers-by. Monitors placed at the rear of the store will draw consumers deeper into the store. Once inside the store, one or more additional sets of monitors carries on the video sales theme. Size counts here too. The bigger the screen, the bigger the impact. Multiple screens in a video wall configuration can take pictures to beyond life size. Add computer control and a video wall can be a dazzling display tool. Stores are also maximizing the sales impact of their video in-store play system by merchandising the products featured in the videos at or near the video monitors where feasible. In these end cap displays, the video program and the product combine for a consistent sales message. Consumers are not frustrated in their quest for entertainment. Video programming plays a big part in video success. Consumers are attracted to visually interesting images and to specialty information. At the same time, they must stop watching the video to shop. Combinations of music and information interspersed 
reinforce this habit. Stores such as Disc Jockey have been producing their own custom shows. The greatest impact happens when the in-store video and audio programming are coordinated. For times when sound is coming from the in-store audio system, video programming, which always includes the artist's name, product name, and or jacket cover image, can still get its message across. Here are some examples from WIA of videographic approaches that work. The music has been abbreviated here for time, but in actual store use, the clips are full length. In-store audio can be customized too with pre-programmed radio promotions featuring local top 10 albums, concert notes, store openings, contests, artist appearances, and special events. Among the areas where Envirocell found that untapped sales potential lays waiting is gifting. Music and entertainment products make perfect gifts. A Spirit of Giving survey showed that consumers would like to see music promoted as gift ideas for Valentine's Day and Halloween. Birthdays and graduations topped the list of events where music gift giving had the most emphasis. Store sales and ads have a big influence on gift purchases, and many consumers give music for no special occasion. Music gift certificates are extremely popular. Birthdays are a big gifting opportunity with birthday clubs, and there are even bridal registers at Tower Records. Here are some other gift giving themes that can fit into advertising and promotional programs. Make gift giving easier with colorful gift wrapping, bags, boxes, or bows. Offer gift giving guidelines to help consumers pick the right gifts. One chain that illustrates many of the EnviroCell recommendations in one powerhouse location is the Sam Goody store at Universal City Walk in Hollywood. The exterior starts with great showbiz signage. This is a heavy foot traffic area and the water fountain in front of the store is a popular attraction before the consumer even enters the store. Backlit displays greet shoppers and one is immediately hit with the diversity and excitement of the products. Directional signage and spotlighting highlight all of the product departments. Video monitors and display boards ring the product shelves. Special sections have been set up for children's, videos, magazines and books, CD-ROM and multimedia, and a separate section for video sales with a sister company, Suncoast Motion Picture Company. A separate international section includes foreign language titles, a big favorite with the many tourists who visit Universal City. And talk about in-store play, this control room would make a television station envious. Twelve VCRs tied to a routing switcher, feeding a dozen monitors, a DJ playback system, and sound control for 30 speakers. I'm here with DJ Gary Bennett. Gary, tell me a little bit about the sound system inside the store, please. Okay, well basically it's designed to uh, let anybody hear anything, no matter what part of the store they're in. We have separate computer channels that make it so they can hear perhaps maybe it louder by the front door or they can hear it louder by the middle of the store. We have a separate channel for the uh, Jazz Classical, which is up in the front, and also we have the video monitors for the Suncoast video over there, so it gives everybody something different depending upon what part of the store they're in. The master in-store play system is only part of the story. There are 72 listening stations throughout the store. Each station has its own merchandising area, usually with the product right at hand for consumers. Do you usually listen to one of the listening stations before you buy a CD or tape? Uh, a lot. Actually, sometimes I come in here, you know, when I get through something neat, and if I just want to hear a particular tune just to hear it, I'll come in here. But I'm in here quite frequently. Now, would you consider buying a CD or a tape without listening to it first on a listening station if you hadn't heard the CD or tape before? Um, probably not. Like, again, it makes it easier, like, if you've heard it, because then, you know, you, you know, you're getting your goods, so you go and buy it. But, yeah, these are very, very helpful. They are. And capping off this store as an entertainment destination is the Espresso Bar on the second floor, with comfortable seating, a relaxed atmosphere, and listening stations for consumers to sample products as well as be entertained. That's putting equal emphasis on the show and the business.
It sure is, and while not all stores have that kind of space and facilities, there are ideas galore on how to make the most of the EnviroCell study for every retailer. Thanks, Stephanie. In-store merchandising is one of the retailer's most powerful tools. Remember, advertising at the point of sale can make a big impact on your bottom line. We hope you've come away from this program with a wealth of new ideas to make your store more profitable and more entertaining. Thanks for watching.